Welcome to this edition of Call Your Focus. On today's show, we'll take a look at the Board of County Commissioners meeting, an update on the proposed Vanderbilt Beach restroom facility, and the board decides to clamp down on illegal signs in the roadway. I'm Troy Miller. We'll cover these stories and more next on Call Your Focus. Stay tuned. Whether reporting on the latest news stories or hot issues, taking a look at county government services, or announcing what's happening around the county, this is Call Your Focus, bringing government home. At the recent Board of County Commissioners meeting, building a larger restroom facility to replace the outdated one at Vanderbilt Beach is proving to be more difficult than one might think. Many residents expressed their opposition to a proposed elevated structure at the current location and would prefer one built at grade level. Now, expanding the current restroom at grade level would be in violation of current FEMA guidelines. FEMA has informed the county unless it builds the facility in accordance with FEMA guidelines, then the county loses its Class 6 rating in FEMA's community rating system. Now, flood insurance policyholders enjoy a $4.3 million premium reduction each year based on that Class 6 rating. The board voted to further explore the possibility of constructing the facility at ground level and to investigate how other similar facilities along the coast have been able to build at ground level. The board also removed plans for a snack bar as part of the design. The board made no announcement of a lawsuit settlement with the South Florida Water Management District regarding the ongoing dispute over the promised 600 acres of land for an ATV park. The ATV park was promised to the county in exchange for roads in South Golden Gate Estates in 2003 as part of the Everglades Restoration Project. The rural roads and trails were a popular recreation area for many in Collier County. The board met with legal staff in closed session to reportedly review a settlement offer from the district. We will keep you updated as soon as anything is announced. The board approved a resolution approving a parks and recreation policy and procedures for the sale and consumption of beer and wine in some county parks for special events only. The board was approached by several groups over the last couple of years and asked to serve alcohol at their special events in our parks. And so the board had granted permission, asked them to work with the parks department. Uh, we've done that and uh, the events have been very successful. We haven't had any difficulty, but we set up uh, the process very carefully. So. Today what the board uh, approved was allowing the Parks and Rec Department through the Parks and Rec Advisory Board to provide these permits to special groups that come to uh, uh, the Parks Department asking to serve alcohol in the parks. So it's Sugden Park, North Carolina Regional Park in our exhibit hall, Airport Park in Immokalee, and already at Golden Gate Community Center, uh, groups can approach uh, the Parks and Rec Department, and if they meet all the criteria, we would grant them a special permit to have alcohol at their event. Williams added that organizations seeking a permit must have adequate safeguards, including security, to control the event. Under the adopted policy, an application must be submitted 60 days prior to the event, and the application will be reviewed and either approved or denied by the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. The Board approved a new ordinance to replace the current Flood Damage Prevention Ordinance, FEMA informed the county that the ordinance needs to be brought into compliance with the community rating system of the National Flood Insurance Program. Staff used the state's flood damage prevention ordinance as a starting document to revise the local ordinance. The county has received the preliminary digital flood insurance rate map from FEMA. Two of the 12 flood map zones were restudied at the county's expense in order to improve the accuracy of the map. The remaining 10 zones may also be restudied. We expect in the next three to six months we'll receive a letter of final determination from FEMA. Uh, at that point in time, we'll have six months to adopt those new maps. Now, the board gave us direction today uh, to submit as quickly as possible a proposal to update the other 10 bases uh, for a total of 12. That could further delay those maps subject to FEMA comments. Homeowners will not be affected by new flood designations until the maps go into effect. For more information, go to callyourgov.net. The board discussed the possibility of implementing an automatic calling system to help diminish the posting of unwanted illegal signs which are littering our county. St. John's County officials have found a new way to crack down on unwanted signs lining their county's roads. They said they're getting back at the people behind the signs with unwanted calls. Many of these illegal signs have phone numbers for people to call, 
St. Johns County officials said they're entering those numbers into an automated system which calls homes as often as 20 times a day. The calls are made morning, noon and night to let sign owners know they're breaking the law. What we're going to do is we're just going to um, review what the uh, motion was which is to um, take a look at this as an option for what the lingo is, snipe signs, which are these little annoying signs in the right-of-way typically advertising businesses and see if utilizing an automated uh, phone caller would be effective. Some board members expressed their reservation about the use of an automatic calling system. No decision on this issue has been made at this time. The board voted 4-1 to one in favor of a request to consider a commercial-only pilot program for PACE which stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy. PACE programs are authorized under a 2010 state law. concept that developed about a decade ago uh, through which property owners can work with local governments to borrow money from a pool of funds developed by the local governments and with those funds make energy to get a loan to make energy improvements, energy efficiency improvements on their homes. Those loans would then be repaid over about 20 years uh, through an assessment that comes out annually on the property tax bill. The assessment would be much like we pay now for road building districts or sewer and water districts or uh, lighting, uh, street lighting districts, that kind of thing. Um, and so um, uh, at the federal level, the um, that mechanism has raised has been uh, has raised some objections by a couple of federal um, mortgage agencies, uh, and so residential pace projects are at somewhat of a standstill until we can work out and overcome those objections. So in the meantime, what we can do is pursue pace projects for commercial properties. And so today the, the Board of County Commissioners gave us permission to go ahead and issue uh, what county government calls a request for information, or RFI, um, from which uh, we will hear from companies and entities that are interested in running a commercial PACE project in Collier County. So we'll, we'll take the next two or three months and get that information in and we'll see where we are and see if anybody has any viable models, any viable um, designs for a program, uh, and we'll go from there. We will keep you informed on the progress of this proposed program. In an atypical ceremony, three businesses were awarded Business of the Month certificates. Arc Naturals, the Haynes Corporation, and Media Vista Group were all on hand to accept their awards. Chairman Fred Coyle explains why these three businesses are so deserving. Fifty companies from 18 Florida counties were named companies to watch by the state of Florida, and we're pleased to announce that three of them are headquartered here in Collier County. Collier County is home to a great many entrepreneurial companies. We're excited that these entrepreneurs have been recognized statewide for their accomplishments and contribution to the local and state economies. The statewide awards were presented by Grow Florida, the Edward Lowe Foundation, and the Governor's Office of Tourism, Trade, and Economic Development. And the firms have between them $750 to $50 million in annual revenue. The Board of County Commissioners and the Economic Development Council decided to name all three as the Collier County Businesses of the Month. The Business of the Month Award is typically given to one outstanding Collier County business each month. Well, it's time for a break. When we come back, Commissioner Coletta returns from a successful lobbying trip to Washington, D.C. And ongoing dry conditions raise wildfire concerns. All of that and more when Collier Focus continues.